Hey there you guys, I am Sarah and welcome back to my channel. If you saw my last video, you probably saw a grocery haul and today I am going to be dividing up the meat and the things that I got in that uh, grocery haul into some smaller portions, some in the freezer, some in the fridge and just divide it into smaller amounts for Alan and I. I'm going to use some vacuum seal bags today to put the things away. Certainly don't have to use vacuum seal bags, but I got some from out of air. Um, they sent me some and I've been trying them out and I actually really love them. So I'm going to use those today just to make a nicer seal on this stuff and just because I have them. So I've got pork, I've got beef, I've got chicken. I'm going to see how much I can get to in the 45 minutes that I have before I need to go to the office. We have afternoon. So I said, I'm going to do this stuff first. I really need to get this meat separated out and packaged up. And then I'm going to go to the office after that. So let's get started. I needed a couple things out of the pantry. One is a marinade pack. One uh, is this seasoning, the coating for the pork chops that I like to do. And then I have another marinade pack up here. This is my other favorite one. If you've seen any of my other meal prep videos, I used this one before too. This one's Brazilian Steakhouse. This one's called Baja Citrus. Both are delicious and very flavorful. So like I said, I'm going to see exactly how much I can get done today pretty quickly. Some things are very simple, um, like just literally shaking and coating these pork chops and putting them onto a pan because, you know, I like to freeze those individually. Let me get a cookie sheet or a pan out here that I can put those onto. Um, I'm going to use my glasses, my reading glasses, as a headband so I don't have hair in my face all day. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, I can just use one of those. That would be fine. And then I'm going to get a little baggie. Not there. In here. This is what I will put the seasoning or, yeah, this coating mix into. And shake it up. So I'm going to do these first because these have to freeze flat on the pan before I can uh, put them away. So I won't be packaging these up and putting them away until later today. But I can go ahead and get them on the pan and that will get them out of my way pretty quickly. Okay, so this is just, I like to buy these um, these are one gallon baggies, but they don't have any zipper on top or anything. They actually, they come with a twist tie. And for a long time, I used these as bread bags when I was making bread to take to the farmer's market. Um, for several years, I used them as that. And then I ended up changing, but they're good. They're handy for so many things. Things that you don't want to use an actual Ziploc baggie on because like, <laughs> Ziploc baggie feels like nicer for some reason, doesn't it? Um, so I use those little bags for all kinds of stuff. I throw things in there, you know, to just put store it away in the fridge temporarily. I use them all the time. Okay, well, I wanted to put salt and pepper on these, um, but now I've got my hands all dirty. So let me take that glove off and I'll use my good hand. Okay, here's some some salt, some pepper. You can put it into the coating mixture. You could put even more seasonings into the coating mixture too if you wanted. You could put um, garlic powder and all kinds of flavorings into there if you prefer. Alan doesn't like his that way. He wants them to taste just like this. He's kind of a, um, he just doesn't like a whole, whole lot of seasoning on these. So, that's fine with me because he's the one who eats them. And this stuff here, they have a million varieties of that at this point. If you like the more flavored ones, get those. They have like barbecue ones. They have extra crispy. They, I mean, just tons of different options in those. And then, as I said, you can really flavor them up as much or as little as you like as well. So get out of my way. Well, I probably shouldn't move it too far because it's kind of... Yucky on the bottom. 
this was, I believe, two pounds of uh, thin pork chops. And these cook up so nicely in the air fryer. Alan has his preferred method. He likes them pretty well done and crispy. That's just his style of food, well done and crispy. But um, <laughs> so he cooks them up exactly how he likes them. You don't have to put any oil, water, nothing on them in order to get the seasoning or the coating to stick. They just, it sticks pretty well without anything on it. So I will coat all of these up, lay them flat on a pan, let stick the pan in the freezer so they can all freeze individually. And then I'll put them into a freezer storage bag. I do use a zipper bag and not a um, vacuum bag for these because this is something that you'll be reaching into to take out one or two of at a time. So I'm just putting all my trash in the sink for now and then I'll chuck it all at once. And this job is done. Okay, into the freezer these go, nice and flat. Okay, one pair of gloves down. But next up, I'm gonna mix up these two marinades. That way we'll have them to pour over whatever we wanna pour them over. And for that, I need some oil, vinegar, and water. Okay, quarter cup, quarter cup, and for vinegar, two tablespoons. First up is the Brazilian Steakhouse one. This one's kind of green in color. You will be able to tell the difference. This one is very red in color. This one's like a chili lime almost. And then the Brazilian Steakhouse is more of a, it's very heavy on the cilantro flavor, like the fresh flavor. So it's, it's very good. Grab me a little fork. Mix, mix, mix. And the package for these says they're for two pounds of meat. So this is plenty to do a good bit that's why I kind of stretch it out a little bit with um, additional oil. You could stretch it even further with a little bit more water if you wanted to. Since these are going to be marinating, you know, in the freezer, that you know you'll have good flavor either way, whether you kind of stretch the marinade or not. Okay, put those out of the way, and then I'm going to use them on. This is a very thinly cut. It's called sizzle steak. It says beef chuck shoulder steak. Um, so we use this for like tacos. I'm probably actually going to have this tonight. So I'm just going to put it in one of those um, plastic baggies as well. This, I'm not putting that marinade on. This is a cube steak. I just want to divide it up into two different packs and put it in the freezer. These I'm going to cut down into about two inch pieces before I put them into bags and put the marinade over them. So get a board, get my favorite knife at the moment, <laughs> get some gloves. So we need two bags for the tenderloin, one cheap bag for the steak we wanna to have tonight. those there and we'll just cut that cut down that tenderloin quickly what else do we have that can go in the marinade probably chicken thighs so we'll have half on the steak for tonight half on tenderloin and then I have half on the tenderloin and then we'll do half of that on some chicken chicken thighs.
set those right there for now very quickly we'll just put this little sizzle steak into a baggie pour a little marinade over it and this one will be done you could cut it into strips before but i'm going to wait until after i cook it and then i'll cut it down this evening and it is a very thin i'll probably do this like on the blackstone and it will take no time at all so i'm just going to kind of separate it in as i throw it into the bag because it's kind of one big piece and then we'll pour some marinade over and smush 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 Okay, like I said, about half of this one. Yummy. That's going to be good. And now I have officially planned dinner. Just like that. Um, these come with twist ties, but I'm not getting that out at the moment. <laughs> I'm not going to dig for those in the drawer right now. I'm just going to use, I'm just going to tie it in a knot. Okay, that's dinner. And now on to the tenderloin. I love these. These are always so good. Now, there is a difference between pork loin and pork tenderloin. And the, the difference is one is good and the other one is very not good, in my opinion. So do not be, do not get pork loin by mistake because what you're getting in a pork loin is basically boneless uh, pork chops. You know how pork chops are um, like more of a white meat essentially. So they will dry out quickly. A pork loin is going to be basically like cooking up pork chops. Um, you have to kind of be careful about the temperature and all of that on it because you can overcook it. Whereas a pork tenderloin is more so like a dark meat, essentially, and it's got more fat and flavor to it, and it's certainly more tender, as the name indicates. I'm just cutting off a little bit of that white, um, what is kind of like a tendon or something like that, silver skin, I'm not exactly sure. But, um, so I'm going to cut these into two-inch medallions is what I call them. I have no idea if that's a real thing or not, but that's what I call it. So just cut them into some pieces. And then when you cook it, you can get, you get more flavor because you have more surface area there instead of just having flavor on the outside of one big log. My sister calls these pork logs. <laughs> she does cook hearts as a pork log in the oven and things. She buys those ones that are already marinated, which those are pretty good. Um, but this way, if you don't mind cooking the individual pieces, is really, really good too. So I do these either in the skillet, you can put them on the grill and they taste great. But anyway, as I said, you get more flavor into the meat because you've given it more surface area to be coated with flavor. So just cut it down to size, and this will be two nice meals for us. One and two. I'm going to put this piece over here because the first one was a little bit smaller. Okay, and these are the bags that I'm using. As I said, these are the ones by Out of Air. They sent me these bags. Oh, I'm trying to open the wrong end. These actually have a zip top to them. Now, obviously, I'm not going to reuse a bag that I had meat marinating in, but these are, you know, you could use these for other things. Um, if you made like a lot of granola or things that you want to kind of get in and out of, nuts or stuff like that, these bags are great for that. They're also, just because I did some research on them, um, I know that they are thicker than food saver bags. And I know they are way less expensive than food saver bags. And you can use them in any... Um, any vacuum sealer that you have. It doesn't matter the brand of yours. Perfect. Okay, so this one is done. I'm gonna do the other one, chili lime. I just wipe the seal because when you put this marinade in with things, 
obviously it kind of gets sucked into the thing there. Perfect. Okay, one more, and I was going to do the chicken thighs for that. So I'll do one chicken thighs. I'll split this pack of chicken thighs up. One in. And I just leave one plain in case I want to cook a... Sometimes I like to use the chicken thighs in uh, crock pot meals, especially because they have such good flavor and they can stand up really, really well to cooking all day in a crock pot meal. I'm going to do three, four, and then this is a one, two, three. I'll just do this other small one here. And then I'll put I'll put these four in their own bag. Down she goes. These can go straight into the dishwasher, which is good too. Okay, let's kind of smush this around before I seal it up. Okay. Easy, easy. I put this last chicken in here before I quit on these. Uh, things I have right here and this one's just dry obviously so it will seal up really really easily I'm going to quickly open up this cube steak this is like a family size pack of cube steak here which I don't buy very often but sometimes it's just nice to have something different, you know? Y'all know what I mean? How many is this? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Perfect. And fear not, I will be sanitizing all of this after I'm done touching it with meat hands. Um, because, yeah, it's going to need it. So this will be two different meals for us. And this, I'm thinking of one time maybe trying to do a gluten-free, um, like a Salisbury steak or gravy steaks, basically. And then the next pack, I'm thinking more of a simmer steak in like a tomato base sauce. I saw some really good recipes yesterday. I was just looking because I thought I might cook it last night, but I didn't have time. So I'm just going to go ahead and, you know, package it up and I'll cook it another night. But I was trying to get some ideas and I saw a tomato based recipe for a sauce and have the gravy steaks in like a tomato-y uh, gravy. Yeah, that sounds right up my alley. Not so much Alan's, but he'll deal. He'll, he'll eat it either way. Okie dokie. So this is a great start and I'm going to have to call it quits for now because it's 1045 and I need to get out of the door here in about 15 minutes. So <laughs> do we think that's going to happen? I don't know, but I'm going to try. So all of this is going to go into the refrigerator and no, all of this is basically going in the freezer with the exception of this one. And I actually got a really good start on this because I only have left in there the chicken breast to do to separate that out and figure out some marinades for it. A pack of, a family pack of ribeye pork chops, which I want to put into some marinade. And a family pack of chicken wings, which I need to cut down into flats and drumettes. So I will be doing that later today once I have completed my actual work day. So this is just chicken thighs. I think I'm probably going to take all this outside and put it into my big, big freezer. This is Baja, Baja citrus chicken thighs. What a mess. This is Baja Citrus Pork Medallions. Jupe. 
this is I'm gonna turn it this way. Um, what is this one called? What is this one called? Brazilian, Brazilian pork medallions. You could write the date on these two if you think it's gonna be a while before you get through them. It's not gonna be a while for us. This is stuff we're gonna be taking from most days. This is cube steak. This is cube steak. So now we're good. Perfect. Okay. These are going to go straight into the freezer outside. I'm going to throw this stuff into the dishwasher and then I'm going to call it quits. Let my dogs out. Go to work for I a little back. while. I am back to the kitchen here and we're going to jump back in. We're just going to jump right back in and pick up where we left off a little, <laughs> a little while ago. Actually, I left at 11 a.m. this morning. Now it's 4 30. So I went to work for a while, came home, changed, uh, let the, let the, oh, fixed up the birds outside. Um, what else did I do? Gathered up eggs, fed, watered every living soul here at home. And um, I also, that's not enough, is it? Oh, uh, what else did I do? I need to get some more avocado oil. Um, then after that, I decided, okay, I need to finish this up because it's Friday afternoon. So if you think the kitchen is looking a little messier than when I began this morning, you're absolutely right because it's Friday and things tend to fall apart over the weekend. And then I try to gather it all back up and get everything cleaned up and back together. <laughs> and then start the week off again. Okay, but what I'm gonna start with here first is to make a few, a couple different marinades. I'm gonna make one is gonna be a honey mustard marinade and the other is gonna be a Greek chicken marinade or Greek marinade um, because what we have left to put into marinades is chicken breast and pork rib eye pork chops. They're just boneless chops um, that have a little bit more fat to them than a regular pork chop, which I really like that. So I'm using my measuring cup here. This is like a little, I don't know, uh, eight ounce. No, it's not even eight ounce. I think it's six, six ounce measuring glass. I like it. It's just the right size and it's easy for measuring marinades, especially. So I'm just kind of making this up as I go, kind of going off of recipes that I've used before going to put a little bit of maple syrup into both of these. Just um, having a little bit of sugar in your marinades makes things brown up a little bit better. So like when you go to cook this up, having a little bit of sugar in there will give them a little bit more caramelization color and depth of flavor. So in goes some stone ground mustard. This will be the honey mustard one. And we need more than that. So let's see if we can get it to come out of there. I want like at least two or three tablespoons. I'll I would like to put whatever's left in here. Let's see. Probably almost a quarter cup to give it a really stout mustard flavor and some lemon juice. It's going to be about two tablespoons. The Greek one will have some lemon juice in it too. Da, da, da. Worcestershire, I'm gonna put into the honey mustard one. Oregano into the honey mustard one. Okay, well that is exactly where the video cut off recording for me. So I did a lot of other things after I um, after I made those marinades up, I had several other things left to do, and I did do them, as it turns out, but they did not record at all. So I thought I would come out here to my big freezer and show you exactly what I packaged up on that day. Um, some of it I've already used, so you won't see that, but I'll tell you what I did. So I got everything out here. It's all in one bin, usually, and... I will just show you what I had. So one thing of the honey mustard pork and I also had one thing of honey mustard chicken, uh, chicken breast. So I had 
chicken thighs left yet to do. I had chicken breasts left yet to do. And I had chicken wings left to do. So I did all those things. I, I portioned them out. And I'm going to show you exactly how I did them. So I did one of the honey mustard pork. One of the honey mustard chicken. Okay, one uh, Greek chicken. That's this one here. One Greek pork. This is the ribeye pork chops, not the pork medallions. So those will be super good. This is just plain chicken thighs, so I'll be able to do whatever I want to with those. At one day, last week, I did meal prep for each lunch, which was so nice and handy. And I had a couple of these of the plain chicken thighs, which I cooked up in the slow cooker. And um, I put in some like, oh, I put taco seasoning in with that. And then for my meal prep, I just put the shredded chicken, some corn and some black beans into my containers and had those for lunch throughout the week. And that was so good. I loved it. I should have done it again this week. I did not think and plan ahead enough yesterday, Sunday. So this is one of the cube steaks that I had portioned out. So there are four pieces of cube steak in here. We already had one of these packages of cube steak which I did as like rice and gravy, basically. I slow cooked the cube steak and made a gravy served over rice. And then last but not least is two things of chicken wings. So this one I left, I cut the wing tips off of all of the chicken wings. This one I left as whole wings. So it's the wing, no, it's the uh, flat and the drumette still connected. I like them this way. I don't mind them this way. Alan prefers them to be completely cut apart into two different things. I don't know, just easier to eat, I guess. But um, it makes no difference to me. So I just did one of each. I just did one of each. And I don't usually put any seasoning onto the wings before I freeze them. Because if you, you certainly can. You can put them into a marinade or something um, or season them up with whatever seasonings you like before you put them in the bag and then you literally just dump them on a pan and bake them. But I don't think that they get as crispy in the oven if you season them beforehand. And honestly, I like to toss them in a little bit of baking powder as well before I bake them up. So that's just my method because that makes the skin really, really crispy if you bake them. I can't remember what I bake them on, at least 400. So bake them on about 400 for quite a long time and the skin gets really crispy because most of the fat kind of melts away out of the skin. Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed today's video. I hope that you don't mind. I had to kind of, I hope you don't mind too much that I got kind of cut off on this one. Of course it happens. Um, but I appreciate you being here and I appreciate you watching and I'm so glad to have you along with me today. Anyway, Anyway, well, I hope you have enjoyed today's video where I've kind of showed you exactly how I cut down big, big packages of meat into smaller portions for just my husband and I to make for suppers. So anyway, thanks for being here and I will see you again in the next one. Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed today's video and I... Well, anyway, I hope you have enjoyed today's video where I showed you how I take those big packages of meat and portion them up into smaller portions for dinners for my husband and I. So um, thanks for being here and I hope to see you again real soon.